Good morning, everyone. Um, so yeah, just like Susan said, I'm going to be talking to you about the uh, Sigma-2 receptor, tmm 97 pgrmc one LDL receptor complex, um, and its uh, role in uptake of A-beta-42. So a little background on to why we uh, started this project was um, the work that I presented last year and we uh, published uh, last year that um, showed some strong evidence that TMEM97 and PGRMC1 form a trimeric complex with the LDL receptor. And that this trimeric complex uh, being intact is necessary for the uptake of LDL. And if you disrupt this complex by either knocking out the proteins or pharmacologically targeting them, uh, you uh, end up with a reduction in LDL uptake. So looking at diseases that are implicated by lipoproteins, um, we uh, decided to look into Alzheimer's disease. Um, Alzheimer's disease is a debilitating disease for uh, the individuals and their families, it has a high economic burden, and uh, the incidence rate is increasing with our growing population. Um, looking in the CNS at what's actually occurring, um, Alzheimer's disease is characterized by the presence of these amyloid plaques that contain um, A-beta-42, amyloid protein, and um, uh, APOE. Uh, the source of these proteins is um, APOE is synthesized by the uh, astrocytes and it's secreted. And its role in the CNS is similar to LDL in the periphery where it transports uh, lipids in the aqueous environment of the brain and um, allows for uh, cellular uptake into various cells such as neurons. Um, the source of uh, amyloid beta is uh, from, secreted from neurons as a uh, result of proteolytic proteolytic cleavage of uh, amyloid precursor protein. Um, a APOE uh, has been shown to be able to interact with A-beta, um, facilitating its, either its, up, its clearance from the brain by uh, various methods. Uh, the one that we chose to focus on was clearance by uptake, uh, by neuronal uptake via the LDL receptor or the L LDL receptor family uh, LRP. Um, so to test this hypothesis, the first thing we wanted to do was um, characterize or recombinant monomers, oligomers, and fibrils uh, to ensure that we had good preparations of them. Um, panel A here shows a uh, TM images of our uh, A-beta-482 monomers, oligomers, and fibrils taken by uh, Sophie, a postdoc in her lab. Uh, as you can see, the monomers, you don't really see any aggregates formed, uh, indicating that we have a clean uh, sample. Our oligomers, you see uh, small round um, uh, deposit, small round uh, particles with no protofibrils or fibrils present, and our fibrils, you see clear filaments, uh, typical of uh, A beta 42 fibrils. Uh, we also characterize them using a, a dot blot. Um, all three preparations were uh, showed positive reactivity with the uh, 6E10 antibody that recognizes all species of A beta 42. However, only our uh, oligomeric preparation showed positive reactivity with the A11 antibody, which recognizes an uh, oligomer-specific antibody. So moving forward, what we wanted to do is test, the first thing we want to do is test the, um, the uh, importance of our trimeric complex and the uptake of these uh, samples, whether they're alone or whether they were in a complex with APOE. For, uh, to test this, we used our HeLa, uh, HeLa cell model system. We had four cell lines. We had our scramble Cas9 cell line, which served as our control cell line. We had our PGRMC1 knockout cell line, our TMEM knockout cell line, and a double knockout cell line that uh, was lacking both PGRMC1 and TMEM97. Uh, these cells are treated with either monomers, ligamers, or fibrils alone, or these uh, ABA-42 monomers, ligamers, fibrils in a complex with APOE3 for 24 hours and uptake was quantified via ELISA. Uh, the first thing that we noticed was that monomers uh, relied on APOE to get taken up efficiently into the cells. You see very little monomers being taken up, but when they're in a the complex with APOE, you see uh, an increase in uptake. We also noticed that the all three knockout cells had significantly less uptake than our control cells for monomers and complex with APOE. The uh, next thing we noticed was that oligomers were able to get into the cells on their own and didn't necessarily re 
uh, require the being in the complex with APOE3 to get into the cells. However, being in the complex, still, uh, they were still able to get into the cells. Um, we see that the, uh, the knockout cells had significantly less uptake of oligomers alone or oligomers in complex with APOE. And finally, we see very little, uh, we see, uh, very little cell associated uh, fibrils that I'll get into um, in the next couple of slides here. But we also saw a similar trend where there was less cell associated fibrils um, in our knockout cells compared to the controls. So the uh, next thing we want to do is also quantify the amount of APOE that was getting into the cells. And we did this via um, uh, ELISA as well. And as you can see, the knockout cells had significantly less APOE3 alone get into the cells. And they also had significantly less APOE get into the cells when it was in a complex with monomers, oligomers, or fibrils. Uh, taken together, this uh, indicated that our trimeric complex was important for the uptake of um, A beta 42 and APOE. Uh, next, we wanted to see if we could pharmacologically disrupt um, the complex and if that played a role in uh, if we were able to inhibit the uptake of APOE. Um, a beta 42 and APOE by pharmacologically disrupting the complex. Uh, we use RHM4 and SW43 ligands for uh, TMEM97, and we used uh, AG205, which is a ligand against uh, PGRMC1. And we quantified the uptake of A beta 42 and uh, APOE. And we found that in cells that were treated with um, these uh, ligands, we see significantly less uptake of all monomers, oligomers um, alone and in the complex with APOE3. Uh, we, didn't, we saw a slight reduction in fibrils, but not to the same uh, extent, which, um, we will, uh, which, I'll, which can be explained in our next slide here. Again, we also saw that when you pharmacologically disrupt the complex, you get uh, a significantly decreased uh, APOE uptake in these cells. So to tease out what was going out with the fibrils, we used a uh, fluorescent A beta 42 that we uh, prepared uh, oligomers and fibrils from, and we looked at the uptake over time in our knockout cells. We find that, so panel A is our oligomer preparation, and we find that over time you can see an increase in um, A beta 42 uptake, um, and this increase was, and that the uh, uptake was significantly less in our knockout cells compared with our control cell line. Um, as you can see with the fibrils, you don't really see so much of an uptake, but rather uh, it's, you, see a, um, you see it associated with the cell surface. And this can explain some of the results that we see with, the, uh, with, with regards to the uptake of these fibrils. And this is consistent with literature that shows that oligomers and monomers are able to be taken up, whereas fibrils uh, accumulate on the cell surface rather than um, are internalized. So, as, a, as a Alzheimer's disease is obviously a neuronal disease, we wanted to look at whether this hypothesis holds up in the context of a uh, primary neuron cell culture system. So to do this, um, we used uh, day 21 in vitro um, rat, primary rat cortical neurons. And uh, these uh, neurons, as shown in panel A, are um, positive for MAP2 indicating that they're mature neurons and they have a morphology typical of uh, matured healthy neurons. Um, the first thing we wanted to do is to establish whether this trimeric complex exists in these primary neurons. So to do this, I performed a proximity ligation assay, a pairwise proximity ligation assay, where I looked at with whether there's an interaction between LDL receptor and PGRMC1. And as you can see, there is. So in uh, using this assay, if you see any fluorescent signal, that indicates that the two proteins are within uh, for the angstrom of each other, indicating that they're in a, a complex. Um, when looking at the LDL receptor in TMEM97, you also see a signal. And when looking at TMEM97 and PGRMC1, you also see a signal. So taken together, this data indicates that this trimeric complex is intact in our neuronal cell culture system. So what we did next is we took these neurons and we treated them with A beta 42 monomers, oligomers, and fibrils alone or in a complex with APOE2, 3, and 4. Um, panel A, here's uh, the, our monomeric data. Um, 
when we took cells, we also treated them with the RHM4, SW43, and AG205 to disrupt our trimeric complex. Um, when looking at the monomeric uptake, you can see that if you disrupt the complex with um, either TMEM97 ligands or PGRMC1 ligands, you see a significant reduction in the uptake of monomers alone or monomers in the complex with APOE2, 3, and 4. Looking at the uh, oligomers, you can also see a reduction in um, uptake of oligomers alone or oligomers in the complex with APOE2, 3, and 4. And um, not surprisingly, we see that there's not really much uptake of fibrils alone or in the complex with APOE, and that there's no, really, there's no significant difference between our untreated and our treated groups. Um, we also quantified the amount of APOE that was taken up under these conditions, and we found that um, whenever you treat the, when you disrupt the complex pharmacologically, you see uh, an inhibition in uptake of um, APOE2, 3, and 4 in the complex with the monomers and the oligomers, but not so much the fibrils, which um, our, uh, our fluorescent data uh, helped explain why we didn't really see any uh, difference between the fibrils. So taken together, this indicates that our intact complex is important for the uptake of A beta 42 alone, which was interesting that it was almost functioning like a lipoprotein in its regards to being taken up by, via this pathway. Um, and uh, also we were able to disrupt the uptake of um, a, a beta when it's in the complex with APOE. So our pharmacological targeting was able to um, inhibit the uptake of A beta um, via two different mechanisms, the uh, A beta uptake during, uh, alone or with the complex of APOE. Um, to show that the actual A beta 42 oligomers were being taken up by MAP2 positive neurons, um, we used again the uh, fluorescent A beta 42 preparation and as you can see, our untreated uh, group, which is at the top here, had significantly more uptake than our, um, our, our ligand-treated groups, RHM4, SW3, or AG205 treated groups. And that the uh, signal for A-beta-42 did co-localize with MAP2, indicating that the uh, neurons were the ones that were taking it up. So next we wanted to see if um, the complex, the trimeric complex was intact in human brain. Um, we looked at a adult normal human brain um, from a patient that did not display any cognitive, um, uh, didn't have any cognitive uh, um, uh, disease state, didn't have any dementia, and um, didn't have any amyloid plaques. And our pairwise proximity ligation our pairwise PLA assay showed that um, LDL and PGRMC1 were indeed in a complex. Uh, LDL receptor and uh, TMEM97 were also in a complex, and TMEM97 and PGRMC1 were in a complex, indicating that this trimeric complex was present in adult human brain. Uh, we also looked at a patient that had Alzheimer's disease, and um, we see that the trimeric complex is also intact in that patient as well. So taken together, our data can indicate that APOE uh, and A-beta are taken up into the cells via our trimeric complex, and um, targeting this trimeric complex was uh, by uh, pharmacologically with uh, compounds that either target TMEM97 or PGRMC1 can inhibit the uptake of A-beta 42 um, monomers or oligomers and can reduce the uh, burden on these neurons and can um, uh, potentially be a mechanism by which we can reduce neurotoxicity. And uh, I'd like to thank my lab, and I'd like to thank Virginia Lee and John Trzynowski, uh collaborators for providing the brain samples, and thank you. Thank you, Aladdin. Great job. So I'm wondering if you not call the TMEM97, right? But uh, have you think about uh, just the mutant uh, TMEM97? Because it's already reported, right? 29 and 56 amino acids. Right. If you mutant, you still maintain complex. 
if those functions still exist. That would be interesting to look at. It depends yeah. on how the mutation affects the complex. Um, so targeting the TMEM97 pharmacologically, what we hypothesize is that if you um, disrupt this complex, you're disrupting the uptake. So it depends on what the mutant, if the mutant is um, disrupted in its, uh, the region that binds to the rest of the other two proteins, or if it's, the, uh, or if it's a different region. That would be very interesting to, to test. OK. Yeah. Because uh, I'm concerned about the DTG binding. So if you lose the DTG binding, it may still maintain AC205 and the RHM1 function. That will be something yeah. worth investigating, right? Okay. We're not concerned about DTG binding because we don't do DTG binding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so do you think um, the A beta is activating uptake, or does it just go in as part of a sort of basal, constantly operating uptake system? Uh, and then, do you know what happens to the TMM ninety seven after it gets taken into the cell? So, yeah, that's interesting. Um, we haven't looked at the fate of TMEM97 under these experiments, but um, last year when we were looking at LDL uptake, we saw TMEM97, um, when it's internalized, we saw that it ends up in the nucleus. So the, the fate of it is something that would be, uh, we still need to be interested in teasing out. Um, now, with regards to your first question, um, A-beta-42 is what we found is it whether alone or in the complex of APOE, it's a li one of the mechanisms by which it gets into the cells is the LDL receptor. Um, now, whether it stimulates further uptake, uh, I'm not aware that it does that. I just believe that this is one of the mechanisms by clearance from the brain is either um, it can be cleared out of the interstitial fluid to the um, CSF or it can be cleared by uptake into the neurons where the, it's degraded in the lysosome. And literature suggests that that is important to look at because as uh, more, uh, more of this peptide is taken into the neurons, um, you can overwhelm the, uh, the lysosome, increasing the pH, causing aggregation and the disruption of its capacity to degrade amyloid beta. And that can be um, a, uh, uh, leading to aggregation and the formation of these plaques and result in neurotoxicity. So. Um, could you go back to your previous two slides? Um, this was an N of one, right, with the PLA? Yeah, we had uh, just one, um, one uh, normal human brain uh, sample and one Alzheimer's disease human brain sample. Okay, on the, in the bottom row, do you know which uh, cell type you're looking at? There? So we're looking at the frontal cortex for both of the patients. But is it a, a microglia, is it a neuron? Oh, so that's uh, something that we're going to be looking at further in the future. Well, one thing that stood out to me looking at it, if you go to the previous slide with the normal brain, the co for LDLR and TMM97 seems to be weighted on one side of the cell, so that could be organelle specific. But if you look at the next slide, this pattern seems to switch to LDLR and PGRMC1, but TMM97 is spread all over the cell. I just don't know if uh, you had any thoughts about what organelle that might be, if it's maybe in the mitochondria or... So you typically do see that polarized um, pattern of expression of the LDL receptor on cells. Um, it's interesting point that you make here that the uh, two do look differently. Um, we are going to be working on teasing out what type of cells they are and that might also help us understand why we see the pattern that we're seeing. Um, and uh, it's just very interesting to see that differences between normal and adult and Alzheimer's disease uh, brains and their expression. Uh, just looking at the expression alone between the two, we see that there's plenty of both proteins. Um, and uh, just like um, the previous presentation, we saw that in the disease state, you do tend to see a little bit more um, TMEM97 present than um, than the normal brain, so. Uh, thanks, Aladdin. Um, I have two questions, and maybe if I won't be greedy, I'll just ask one of them <laughs> first, and we can talk about the other one later. Um, you, you mentioned um, the disruption of the uh, tripartite complex. Did you actually see 
loss of PLA signal with treatment with um, the Sigma-2 compounds? We haven't looked at that. That was our hypothesis that, what, that what's occurring. Um, because whether you target one or the other, you have the same uh, effect of reduction of uptake. But that might be something interesting to see if just um, treating the cells alone causes a reduction in up of, uh, of signal. Right. And I don't know if there are any other questions. If not, okay. Yeah. I'll ask. The other one, I just wanted to find out a little bit more about the ELISA that you did for the okay. uptake, but we can talk about that later, Brad. Okay. Uh, nice presentation and interesting data. Um, one of the things that I, I wanted to ask about uh, applies to experimental models that we use. And I was wondering if you've tried to use different A beta fragments, uh, all of which uh, tend to be cytotoxic, 25 to 35, for example, 31 to 35. They've all been demonstrated to elicit uh, behavioral effects like, you know, cellular behavioral effects like long-term depression, um, a, as well as cytotoxic effects. Would you expect to see or have you determined whether or not these different fragments elicit the same kind of internalization um, dynamics? That's an interesting question. We haven't looked at it. The reason why I chose A beta 42 or let's say A beta 40 is that it's more cytotoxic to the, the neurons than A beta 40. But the smaller fragments, that's a, that, you bring up an interesting point. Um, if they do get into the uh, cells via this LDL receptor complex, um, I do presume that this would, uh, that they would be decreased in the treated states versus untreated. But again, I'm not, uh, we haven't tried that out. I'm not sure if they do get into the cells, uh, if this is a mechanism by which they can get into the cells. It's a very good point. Yeah, that might be very interesting to look at. Interesting uh, presentation. Just a quick question, something that I might have missed. I was wondering, uh, for these complex studies, is ApoE isolated or is it part of a lipoprotein when it's being? So uh, for these experiments, we used uh, ApoE, recombinant ApoE that I lipidated um, so that it's in the lipidated state because the lipidation state of ApoE plays a big role in its capacity to be take internalized or in its capacity to bind A beta. Um, so yeah, we, we uh, purchased human recombinant ApoE234 that I lipidated. Great, thank you. Any other questions? This will be the last one. Okay, so Aladdin, I'm looking at you and I'm looking over at Bob uh, and uh, don't want to preempt Bob's closing comments here, but I uh, was just wondering if you could speculate a little bit on the uh, phenomenon of displacement uh, of oligomers and an increase in the off rate that we observed with some of the sigma-2 ligands with this. Is that OK, Bob, <laughs> to ask a lot, Matt? Uh, yeah, go right ahead. Yeah, so um, yeah, I definitely am familiar with your displacement. I feel like that's, a, that's actually a very uh, uh, exciting um, finding that you guys made. Um, with regards to this, um, I'm interested to see how that would work. Um, I do, so with our compounds that we tested here, uh, we find that just the fact that you're targeting the protein may cause that complex to fall apart. Now, with regards to displacement, I'm not, that would be uh, interesting to, to test experimentally to see what occurs, but I can presume that it would cause some displacement, as you guys have already showed. But yeah, that would be something interesting to look at.